I have been receiving many questions regarding the topic of superannuation, such as types of contributions and benefits of one over the other. I have many videos that explain different types of contributions. Number one, four reasons to make personal tax deductible contributions that explain what concessional contributions are. Number two, downsize the contribution to super who can benefit non-concessional contributions to super when selling family home. Number three, reduce tax through super. How much can you contribute to superannuation? Further explanation of concessional contributions. And number four, can superannuation bring forward contributions? Another example of non-concessional contributions. As you can see, there is a variety of superannuation contributions, but we need to know when one is better than the other. This is my plan for our future videos that was requested by many, not knowing why use one type of superannuation contributions in one situation and another in another situation. This is a great suggestion and fantastic request. But before we get to the nitty gritty about contributions, first we should understand superannuation as a product and the difference between the accumulation and a pension phase of the superannuation cycle. And this is another great question that I keep receiving. What is the difference between those two cycles and which one is better and why? My name is Catherine Nisbrand from About Retirement. I'm a certified financial planner and you are watching About Retirement TV, the place that I created to assist you if you are preparing for retirement or if you have already retired and are looking for ways to improve your financial situation and outcomes, to save smarter, to save tax where possible, to improve your investments or government benefits and so much more. So today we are comparing the accumulation phase and the pension phase. What's the difference and why? Which one is better and why? Well, let's start with accumulation phase. This is the stage where all the money is being collected by a different types of contributions. Number one, employer superannuation guarantee contribution, which currently is at 10.5% of your gross wage, increasing by 0.5% annually up to 12% by 2025. Number two, salary sacrifice. Number three, personal concessional contributions when you climb tax deduction. Or number four, personal non-concessional contributions when you contribute the after-tax money to your superannuation account. All contributions outside of non-concessional will be subject to what is called concessional contribution tax, which is 15% and non-concessional contributions are not subject to any entry tax. All of those contributed money accumulate in your superannuation, hence the name of the accumulation phase. And your money is invested in some form of investments chosen either by you or by super fund if you choose the default option. Money can be invested in shares and earn dividends. It can be invested in a property and then it earns rental income. It can be invested in cash, term deposits, mortgage funds, bonds and earn some kind of the interest return. Or you could decide to invest your money in a mixed fund, which we all know as balance fund, conservative fund or growth funds. Most types of investments will pay some form of an income, as I've listed before. And then income is subject to tax of up to a maximum of 15%. If your investment grows in a capital value and then it gets sold, it might be subject to capital gains tax, provided it has been held longer than 12 months 
the rate of CGT in super is up to 10%. So as you can see, there is a definite tax savings in superannuation income tax, as well as capital gains tax when comparing the tax paid at your personal marginal tax rate. This is a beauty of savings within the superannuation environment. If you have SMSF, you might hold a rental property or a commercial property. If you do, then your rental income will also be subject to a maximum 15% tax and capital gain up to 10% if you sell the property after holding it for 12 months or longer. Things that most people are surprised with is the fact that there is no limit how much you can accumulate in your super and you can hold the money in superannuation for as long as you like. Labour, however, is now trying to introduce a new superannuation tax for funds with balances over $5 million. You can find out all the details in my video, new super tax, yes or no. Also, there is no rule as to the number of super funds that you can have, which is a surprise to some. The government has been advertising their idea of consolidating superannuation accounts into one as a way to reduce your superannuation cost. Well, sometimes this is correct, oftentimes it is not. I often will use a couple of superannuation accounts for estate planning or tax planning purposes, but neither the government nor industry super funds will tell you this purely from the point of view of self-preservation and self-interest. The sad part is that it works. The government will end up with greater taxes being collected from you, while industry funds made a huge marketing killing advertising how to save on superannuation fees and getting a big market share of your superannuation savings, taking your attention away from a real issue, which is how to maximize your superannuation savings, how to minimize tax legally and secure your savings for your next generation in case of your early passing. It is only when people approach retirement when they start paying attention to their money and start setting up superannuation savings and other assets correctly, often with the advice and assistance of a financial planner. Pension phase. After the whole life of work and savings, there is a time when you want to retire, either fully or partially, and you need to commence an income stream and start drawing some income from your superannuation savings. This is when you start the pension phase. You can transfer your superannuation to a pension in full or just part of your superannuation balance. You are not forced to close down your superannuation account just because you need some income from your savings. But in order to transfer funds from super to pension, so to roll over savings from the superannuation account to a pension account, you have to meet conditions of release. And most common are either retirement from employment if you reach your preservation age or reaching the age of 65. Pension funds require you to draw at least the minimum income that has been prescribed by the legislation that is based on your age. So it could be 4%, 5%, 6% or more if you are older. The older you get, the bigger the chunk of money that you have to receive from your pension fund. But this is the time when the financial magic happens. Pension funds do not pay any income tax. Therefore, all your dividends, interest, rental income, all of it is coming to you at nil tax. If your investment grows in value and uh, is sold at some future point in time, there is no capital gains tax consequences. Income that you receive in your bank account, so your pension payments are not taxed in your hands. Therefore, not subject to your personal income tax. This is the most beautiful time for your savings that are generally not subject to any type of tax, unless 
you have an untaxed element within your fund, which exists only in all style of defined benefit pensions. What's more, if you receive any income from Australian shares as fully frank dividends, this is like financial heaven opens up for you when all franking credits are being fully refunded to your super fund or your pension fund. I cannot believe why more retirees are not utilizing Aussie shares for their financial advantage, but this is a subject for another video. Going back to the level of income that is prescribed based on your age. Sometimes retirees are getting a little bit upset to be forced to be drawing that level of income if they don't need it. Well, please understand that superannuation funds and pension funds have been designed to support you for your life expectancy. They are not your tax effective financial vehicles for keeping savings so you can keep money for your beneficiaries in a concessionally tax environment. Therefore, the income level has also been designed in such a way that you are supposed to use up your superannuation savings during your lifetime. But please remember, just because income has been paid out to you, if this is too much, there is no law that says that you have to spend it. Reinvest the money in other financial vehicles or even reinvest back into superannuation if you still can. This is where a smart money planning comes into play. Another option is to transfer to an account-based pension or other form of a retirement income stream only a portion of your superannuation balance. Nobody says you have to move all your money out of super to a pension account. If you are unsure of the best ways to maximize your benefits, just get professional advice. You can always reach out to our office, organize a meeting with me and understand your options. I hope you enjoyed this video and I managed to explain the difference between accumulation phase and the pension phase of your superannuation cycle. If so, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel not to miss any of my future videos. If you would like to have a chat with me about how you can improve your situation, please visit my website aboutretirement.com.au where you can not only book a meeting with me, but also view all the articles and videos created over time. And don't forget to sign up to my newsletter. If you want to book a meeting on each page of my website, there is a button to do so. This will take you to my personal calendar where you can choose the time that suits you to have a deep private conversation with me. And now please watch some of those recommended videos four reasons to make personal tax deductible super contributions that explain what concessional contributions are. Second recommendation is reduce tax through super. How much can you contribute to superannuation? Further explanation of concessional contributions. I will speak with you in my next video. Bye for now.